There you go. Now it's we are recording okay. now. Thank you, Mick. Okay, so let's see here. So this is our fourth meeting of our entities working group. Um, as you saw uh, from the agenda, so I, I really was trying to split this meeting into sort of trying to decide uh, our next steps here uh, based on where we currently sit um, with the decision making process and, and where we can go here. Um, I know I've been creating a lot of various documents um, that I've been kind of throwing it at you all to see what sticks. Um, so I'd like to get a sense of, of where everybody would uh, feel most comfortable moving forward here um, in terms of uh, um, our, our, the two proposals as well as the next steps. Uh, just as a reminder here before we get into the meeting though of our sort of, of our schedule, let me bring that up. And let me share the screen here. Up, oh, yeah, thanks, Mick, for sharing the agenda. I'm going to share my screen briefly just so I can walk through a couple things for folks on who watch this video later. Um, so, as a reminder, let me bump up the size of my text. Um, our goals were really trying to, so before the end of September, sort of assess the, the early prototype that Atmire created, and we've been in that process for a while um, and had the alternative uh, suggestions brought up in the uh, proposal number two uh, before the end of October, which we're already almost to mid-October, uh, defining our implementation roadmap for how we're going to, to implement uh, configurable entities and get them ready for DSpace 7 and what we can sort of achieve by DSpace 7. Um, so this is still a work in progress, which is sort of expected to be, but I just want to kind of note where we, where our timelines sit, uh, because the main goal here is that we really need to have something that's ready for review from the committers, from the DSpace 7 team, um, uh, and everybody else involved with DSpace 7, basically, uh, we'd like to have something that's um, that at, at a reviewable state by late November. Uh, if we don't meet that deadline, then it's going to be very difficult to get this moving forward into DSpace 7. Um, so that's just sort of where we sit with what we need to achieve. Um, and as we're almost sort of midway uh, towards that deadline, we started in, in September, we're already almost to mid-October, um, we really need to start to speed up our process here and also get more actual developers involved um, and get, get more into the code. At least that's sort of my opinion um, with where we currently sit. Do we have a question there for a moment? Uh, uh, Tim, no, it's not a question. Just to uh, add something uh, here, especially related to your last sentence. So adding more developers just to share with a group that um, as you might have seen, yesterday was officialized the uh, uh, signing of the MOUs between DuraSpace and OpenAir. And one of the outcome of this MOU, I mean, one of the ideas is for OpenAir to provide a couple of developers uh, uh, to support this effort. So, uh, and the idea that uh, uh, team and I and, and the OpenAir uh, team uh, have been discussing is to use those developers for this very uh, working group uh, to support the entities uh, 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 effort, especially because it's very related to compliance with uh, the the new open air guidelines. So I'm I'm in contact with Manola. We 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 don't have. I mean, currently I can't share um, uh, more info about how when those two new developers and resources and support uh, will uh, join because I, I, I don't know, Natalia hasn't uh, came back to me yet, uh, but I, I hope we'll have some news by your next meeting. That's it. Yep, sounds great, Mac, and thanks for, for um, bringing that up as well. Um, and yeah, so I, I would hope that, yeah, they'd be able to chip in to this process immediately and even perhaps help us really look at the code in light of uh, the open air guidelines more than anything else, making sure we're meeting those use cases as one of our primary sort of goals here for DSpace 7. Um, okay, so that's, that's where we sit in terms of our deliverables and our timelines. Um, so jumping back here to our agenda, for today. 
Uh, I sort of split the meeting in half. We'll see how long each of these discussions takes. Um, but, but the goal is just to start to map out where we're going next and really start to dig in here a little bit more deeply into um, getting towards the code and what we can start to do with the code um, towards implementation. Uh, so first, we had this survey um, that I had submitted after the last meeting um, to try and gather some feedback. Whoops, that's the actual survey itself. I want the results. Um, and so I, I'm assuming everybody had a chance to read this. These were, it's very brief in terms of the number of people who actually submitted, um, submitted uh, feedback. As we saw right away, there was more people currently leaning towards proposal one, um, one person on the proposal two side leaning that way, and one person undecided. After reading through uh, the comments here, um, and everything that's been um, provided in terms of feedback, um, I wanted to highlight a couple things in terms of the comments that we received. So first off, um, I think uh, the comments themselves really came from one, two, three, four, essentially five institutions. Um, so we had Indiana University, ETH Zurich, um, several people related to the RCAP project. So I'm kind of lumping them a little bit together here. Uh, Jordan from uh, uh, University of uh, Tr Triste, I, I'm horrible with the pronunciation of that, and Alexander as well. Um, so we've had um, five different people, five different institutions basically give some feedback. Some of the things that I would note or highlight here, um, Mark had noted uh, very specifically that he had um, has feed, uh, felt that proposal number one did a better job of actually describing the relationship at the database level. Um, and providing more flexibility to how, how we can present new relationships. Uh, the RCAP team um, submitted the same opinions along the ways as you, as you can note here, but the one thing that I will pull out here is that uh, Paulo's comments uh, were very specific around, um, around their experience trying to implement uh, the same sort of concept within authority control and DSpace 5 and some of the the issues they sort of ran into um, and how they, they felt that this was a little bit of a workaround solution um, and, and kind of pro and felt that the proposal one was a little bit of a more straightforward um, solution from their experience. So they kind of noted a little bit of bad experience trying to implement this at the authority level. Um, Greg had noted uh, what he had noted last meeting in terms of this being uh, industry standard, um, feeling that it should be more at the database level. Uh, Jordan provided some feedback in terms of proposal two. So those are the people at proposal one with the three main um, three main um, institutions around proposal one, which was RCAP, uh, Greg from ETH, and uh, Mark Wood from Indiana. Uh, Jordan had noted that uh, he felt that uh, um, proposal two uh, was a little bit of an easier upgrade process, both from DSpace and DSpace Chris. So that was his sort of main point there. Um, and then Alexander, I'll note, was the one who, was, who noted that he's on the fence. And I know you're here, Alexander. She can speak to this a little bit if you want. But um, noting that, that he saw both sides of the, uh, of the uh, argument here in terms of proposal one versus proposal two, but from reading Alexander's comments, I got the sense that you might have a slight preference towards proposal one just because you were you like the bi-directional hard relationships concept um, and had some concerns listed in here around um, uh, um, uh, exactly how the authority framework could uh, could meet that same sort of needs. So that's kind of my brief summary of where I see these where I read in said it sort of the big points here. Out of that, what I sort of took from this, uh, my personal uh, view here is that it seems like the group as a whole has sort of started to lean more towards uh, the first proposal uh, being um, the, the existing prototype from Atmire, but there's a lot of concerns and um, uh, that were noted both in the other documents around how we meet certain goals, how we meet certain use cases, um, as well as just starting to try and uh, better parse out um, how uh, this, this proposal number one would work in conjunction with the existing authority control system and where there might be overlaps in terms of uh, use cases 
as well as um, overlaps in how we might, how it eventually may need to use part of the authority control if it does need to as part of the submission process. Um, so that's a, I'm going to stop there for a moment to see if I, if people feel, felt that I gave that a fair, fair summary from what I've read. Does anybody want to add more into your feedback here? I know most everybody who is, who has commented on this document is in this meeting. Would you like to clarify anything that I've said? And is there anybody else who would like to add in, anyone who did not submit uh, an opinion as part of this proposal that would like to add any, any additional feedback into this? Looking at the list of who's all here. See if there's anybody else who did not add feedback. Okay. So my recommendation out of all of this, to be honest, um, and I want to hear your feedback on whether or not you you agree with this. My recommendation would be um, that, uh, based on the feedback given here and based on on all of the the good thought put into this, I would recommend we start to move forward with um, with proposal number one. Uh, but analyze it against more specific use cases. Um, and so what I mean by that is that I would like to see us um, do a little bit of a deeper dive even into the code level, into the, the database structure level, concentrating more on proposal one to ensure that uh, we are in agreement that it's gonna meet our core use cases. Because I know there's, we had a lot of various great questions, great comments um, throughout all of our Google Docs um, and I want to make sure that we kind of synthesize those comments together and ensure that um, especially the areas that we felt were possible concerns for proposal one, that we can find a way around those concerns and that we can find, um, find a solution that would work for DSpace 7. What that does mean is that I think that we should switch our trajectory here. My opinion is we should switch our trajectory, concentrate on proposal one, with the assumption that this is going to be the way we'll implement it in DSpace 7. However, if in the next couple of weeks or next, you know, uh, two, two to four weeks, basically probably less than a month, we don't have a whole lot of time here. Um, if we find that we hit a major blocker along the way, um, there is always the option to, to uh, sort of swap back over to the, the quicker solution, which I think is proposal two in terms of, uh, the less, uh, uh, less uh, the, the smaller step in terms of that we can reuse the existing authority framework um, and see if we can actually make that work. Um, but because of, the, because of all the concentration, because of all the preference for proposal one, I think that seems like that's the best direction for everybody here in this, com in this uh, group, as well as our community and moving forward to try and analyze and give that the best, uh, the benefit of the doubt and start to move forward with, with use cases and, and prove out that this is going to meet our needs. So I've said a lot here. Does, does anybody else want to comment on that? Um, anyone have disagreement, agreement? I'm especially looking towards um, those who did not submit proposals um, first. Uh, so non Atmire, non um, uh, non uh, uh, for science. Anybody else want to give feedback into that? Do you feel that that's the correct direction for now? Do you have any other alternate proposals? Well, I, I haven't submitted any any proposal, but uh, uh, if I have to say, I, I'm I was looking also for the uh, for the first proposal, so I think that. Uh, it would meet our our concern and uh, everything we have to do for the dispersed entities. So I think that it's the, the right direction. Thank you, Roberta. Any other comments on, on the suggestion to move towards proposal one and do a deeper dive? Okay, not hearing anything. Um, any other general uh, comments, I guess, um, on anything that I've said here? I'll, I mean, do, is there anything, any other comments that anybody wants to add, including um, Atmire and Force Science before we sort of close up this initial topic? Because this is sort of topic number one on our agenda.
Okay, not hearing anything then. Um, so I think what I would, on my personal opinion here, and so the, the next steps for me, um, kind of moving into agenda number two here, um, is that I would like to start to synthesize um, our, our set of use cases around what we want to achieve in DSpace 7 to ensure that this proposal one is going to align well and, um, and meet those use cases so that there's no, um, no major concerns or sort of gotchas or anything of that nature um, that could be, um, that could uh, affect our ability to move forward with, with proposal number one. Um, so by that, what I'd kind of like to, to suggest here is that first off, I think we need to, um, we need to get a sense of if there's further information that people want to get around uh, proposal one um, and whether it will meet all of the various use cases that we, that we want to achieve in DSpace 7 and also start to define those use cases at a much more um, detailed level. So as I had shared after last meeting, I started to draft up two initial use cases, sort of a use case and a user story around, um, around what I think might be best to concentrate on uh, just for DSpace 7. These are not final by any means. Uh, and I think there's more detail that we really should be adding into these more, more specifics um, that we want to be able to achieve in terms of the relationships restoring, especially in how we want to be able to access various objects um, within these use cases. But, um, but my proposal was to try and concentrate more closely on uh, two specific use cases one being um, being able to store, <coughs> excuse me, journal volume issue articles. Uh, so this is sort of a journal hierarchy. So journals have uh, specific volumes, volumes have individual issues, issues have individual articles, and that provides a hierarchy of sort of entities that shows off that we can manage a sort of hierarchy of entities. Um, if we don't like this use case, there's other ways to prove out the hierarchy um, use case, which is the, the base problem I was trying to go for. We could also change this into more of an, we want to be able to store organizational structures. Um, I just wasn't sure whether we, well, whether we felt a journal hierarchy or an organizational structure hierarchy is a more important use case here. Uh, but I think either one of those um, to prove out that we can build a hierarchy within the entities um, is a very useful um, goal for DSpace 7. So that, that was my first first one that I noted. The second one is really around author profiles. I'm calling them author profiles just because that's uh, the term that I've heard most in the in the states. I admit we can name this whatever we want, but the the end goal is to be able to to store authors in the systems in the system, and especially provide relationships around authors uh, relating to individual articles and works that they've written. Um, and, and making sure the complexity of that author relationship is actually captured. That, so things like um, getting into the author story, um, having, having a complex use cases like publishing under different names, uh, which is a common scenario with, it, with authorship, um, even uh, publications with different organizations. So you may be affiliated with multiple organizations, which I realize I didn't list in this particular author story, but, but being able to prove out that we can manage those sort of use cases um, and also allowing authors to even do things like uh, feature highlighted works and stuff of that nature, um, which allows us um, to, to build more complex relationships between um, author entities and, and the related things that authors do. Um, so these are the two high-level use cases that I was seeing as potentially most important, but I'd like to hear from you all to see if, if you agree or if you'd like to see a different use case. I'd like to try and really keep this to two to maybe three max uh, for DSpace 7 so we can really concentrate our effort, um, but I'd like to hear feedback on, on what you think was, would be most useful. Well, that sounds like a nice selection to me, but you know, I'm sure I'll other people have additional interests. Yeah, I know, I know that we will always have many, many use cases that we want to meet. I think I'm just trying to find two that are different enough to prove out a lot of the base sort of relationships we would want to structure within DSpace. 
So others have thoughts on these concepts? I just have a small comment. Uh, sure, I, I like the idea to have a, a journal instead an organization to to have a broad range of use cases. Uh, but it should be noted that uh, in this way we have two entities that are not related together. Uh, that is uh, a specific needs in some case. So author are related to organization, publication are related to both author and organization and for instance this is not something that uh, maybe need to be necessarily solved for the space seven but we should have a list of plan about how to support ternary relationship in this space and this is um, a huge point that I, I don't see how, how to manage with the current proposal so I would like to discuss more about publication where you have a list of author, list of affiliation of this author into publication, and you have an author profile with the career of the author. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so I, I agree. I, I see that as part of um, those sort of use cases and questions. I, I think we should enhance the user story here. Um, and I admit I haven't had a chance to add all of that in there into the user story. So if you look at like the author profile user story, I do have things like, you know, this person has six different names that they published under. Um, but we probably should also add different sort of um, uh, complexities into this that are going to be common complexities uh, that we want to make sure that we're able to meet. And that's the purpose of this user story here is to kind of give us something that's a little bit more tangible to say, okay, let's find a, a semi-complex or a semi-common use case or scenario that is going to pop up within institutions that we know of. So another one that should be listed here that is not is that um, the, this author is affiliated with two institutions and we want to know um, when, when that author has published with one institution and what works they've done with that institution, which works they've done with another institution. Um, so, so those sort of things I think we need to add into the user story. Um, your other comment, I, I saw that as two comments there, Andrea, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, your, your other comment, I think, was around um, the fact that journal, the journal hierarchy doesn't really relate directly to authors, whereas an organizational hierarchy would, direct, would relate a little bit more directly to the author use case. And I agree with that. Um, I think that's, that's accurate. Um, I guess I'd ask, um, and maybe it is, maybe we do need to, to make three use cases here. Maybe the third one needs to be that organizational hierarchy. Um, and making sure that we can um, we can really document how that would be achieved within D Space Seven, um, especially especially in light of the fact that we want to align ourselves very well with Open Air, as we already mentioned. Um, so, is this a good argument for having concentrated on three use cases? Do we consider uh, dropping the journal use case, although it might maybe that's important enough to keep as that third. I don't know, what do folks think? I'd like to hear more feedback here. Uh, I think I, I would like to keep these two at least because it's important to have one use case that's a hierarchical data model and another one that's a graph data model. So that's, I, that's why I like these two use cases. But I think it's, I mean, the way that Andrea also formulated it, I think it's possible to extend the author profile use case to include a second um, entity in there that is the organizational unit. That's not really a problem. We already have um, that entity in our uh, prototype implementation anyway, so that's not a big problem to add. Um, we also have projects in there, um, so you can also add projects into it. Um, so, I, I, but I would keep the the journal one just to have a, a different kind of, of uh, data model because you know we, we have already been discussing internally a bit here how to approach both of these use cases and start drafting a document that I haven't made public yet but we'll do by the next meeting. Um, uh, and, and we have been seeing some differences in the way you want to provide display options for entities depending on whether they're in a hierarchical structure or in a graph-like structure. Um, and so 
I think it's useful to still have both of them. Um, so yeah, that that's a good point that we could go ahead, Mark. Oh yeah, I I wanted to may I'll just say that uh, giving realistic examples of you know, all these use cases is probably going to suggest that you know we introduce other entities that you know, logically would be related to them. Uh, uh, but that doesn't change the focus of the the story. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I'm really trying to keep us focused on, like I said, two to three uh, stories because I think much more than that is going to be way too much work um, given our timelines. Um, but I do like that suggestion that we could potentially treat or expand the author profile story slightly to include um, organizational unit relationships or some sort of relationship to a thing that is an organization and not worry as much about storing the organizational hierarchy as a separate use case because we can prove out hierarchy um, relationships via the journal use case. So if we can do journals well, we should be able to do organizations well, but we need to have that sort of base relationship in the author profile. Does that make sense? And I think that that's what I heard Levin say. I don't know what you would think about that, um, Andrea, since you brought this up. Does that seem like a reasonable way to deal with organizational units at a base, at a very basic level? Uh, excuse me. Before Andrea Zana? answers uh, this question, I would like to underline an important aspect of this work uh, that unfortunately needs to be done very quickly. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, my main concern is from the architectural point of view, uh, which means that uh, we do not necessarily need to solve all the problems that we raise uh, now before the release of this work, but uh, we need to address them in a way that architecturally they can be solved at a later time. And what I mean here is that, uh, well, DuraSpace has a strong partnerships with uh, um, uh, Eurocrace, OpenAir, and I think also Core. They said very important things about uh, uh, data modeling and specifically the, the SRIF model uh, for Eurocris, mm -hmm. the uh, recommendations for uh, repository managers uh, with open air and the next generation repositories recommendations for core. And uh, they all uh, address uh, uh, the use case uh, related, the use cases related to the research domain, but uh, uh, our experience uh, um, says that uh, uh, these use cases are pretty uh, very good also for the cultural heritage and other related domains that may uh, exploit uh, the maximum potential that this space can express. So this said, I think that uh, we should really stick to uh, the work that has been done by uh, our nearby communities in terms of recommendations and uh, uh, modeling to uh, be sure that we are following the right path and we don't reinvent the wheel and uh, uh, we don't uh, go in a different direction from the rest of the community. Yeah, so are there any specific examples that, you, that you're that you wanting to highlight there? Because I agree with that, Suzanne. I think that's the, the overarching goal of this work. Um, and as, uh, as Mick had noted earlier, um, that's part of the reason why um, Open Air wants to get involved with this effort and provide development effort is to make sure that um, what we are building will help align uh, both with those new open air guidelines as well as uh, the base core um, uh, next generation repository guidelines. Um, so, so I see us as moving very much in that direction. I'm just not sure um, if there's something you're wanting to bring out um, specifically. Well, what we can contribute here is I think to um, sort of verify uh, what are the uh, implementation lines uh, uh, against the recommendations of these uh, three organizations mm -hmm. to make sure that we are going in the same direction as the rest of the community and uh, that this space will be uh, satisfying 
and uh, excellent tool for all these uh, the use cases that are uh, basically uh, um, uh, I mean being uh, used uh, in the being explored in these communities. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that conceptually. I think I would I would uh, ask the members of this working group to to definitely um, let us all know if you feel that our our direction as we're moving forward with this becomes somehow not aligned uh, with next generation repositories and open air. But but I think that's kind of the overarching goal of this this effort to begin with. So I'm hoping that. Um, our alignment has, has been from the beginning and I kind of am, am wanting to keep that alignment in place um, and as those open air developers get involved um, that'll be part of their role as well to make sure that we're kind of um, keeping that alignment uh, but but yeah if anybody notices anything that seems out of alignment please definitely let me know um, or let this working group know and we can kind of um, analyze those as we go forward Um, so, so yeah, going back to uh, trying to concentrate on a couple use cases here, um, does it seem reasonable to to uh, to include the sort of organizational, the base organizational relationship just as part of that author profile use case um, to others? Yeah, uh, just to to answer because you asked it uh, directly to me. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think that it would be enough. Would be good to have a basic organization into uh, um, into use cases. Is not necessary to stress too much about the organization structure. So we okay. can explore explore the hierarchical structure on the journal use case. Uh, I will like to see the relation between uh, entities into uh, uh, into organizations. So author related to organization, publication related to organization publication, author, and organization all related together. This is the key point for me. So how to deal with ternary relationship that are something really important. Yeah, I'd like to, um, I agree with you, Andrea. I would like to add those into our, um, into like the, these use cases so that we're more, more specific about those sort of edge cases, well, maybe not edge cases, but those more complex cases. Of, of having those relationships between individual publications and organizations as well as publications and authors and, and making sure we're able to deal with all those because uh, those are things we're gonna need to, 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 to have answers for or plans for at the very least if we're not able to build it all into DSpace 7, we need to know how we can move forward with that, those, those concepts. Um, so I, I, I can work to add some of those in here, um, Andrea, um, that, you, that you'd noted. I've been taking a couple notes here um, on a piece of paper into these use cases, uh, but I would encourage you to also kind of add, um, add notes um, throughout this document so we can kind of enhance uh, these use cases and, and user stories to ensure that we're kind of meeting all those complex cases. Okay, so so it sounds like then to me, it sounds like we're in general agreement that these two initial use cases are good. We want to enhance them more in terms of being able to enhance some of those more complex scenarios, add author or add organizational units into the author profiles use case um, and make sure that we have these these user stories well described. Um, so I would, I would encourage you all to kind of take a look at these in more detail um, after this meeting and add more comments into here, help me enhance this document um, so we can really kind of detail out what our use cases and user stories are um, for this first implementation. Uh, the goal then would be that um, as we're enhancing these use cases and user stories, uh, we're gonna do a deeper dive on proposal one to ensure that we can get alignment with what we wanna achieve out of these use cases and user stories. Um, so we want to be able to get a better sense um, of, of how we would achieve these more complex relationships uh, using the, the uh, relationship structure in, in proposal number one and where, where we start to hit um, any complexities or where we need to enhance it or improve upon it um, or anything of that nature. Um, and also, I think along the lines, getting a better sense of how that starts to align with external relationships, which are what authority control is, is things to like ORCID and stuff of that nature. But hopefully that will start to solidify more as we go through these use cases, walk through them 
with proposal one and see how this data would be stored, see how this data would be captured and ask questions as we go. Uh, does that make sense as a general trajectory direction here? Uh, let me see, let's see here. Oops, I got my menu in the way. There's one other thing I wanted to bring up, or a couple other things I wanted to bring up. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Mark, that sounds good? Okay. Um, okay, so our concentration will be on these use cases in the near term and starting to look at proposal one with those use cases. I think as a part of those use cases, I really want everybody to start to think about um, these two questions and these, these will help us actually inform those use cases. Um, so is there, especially the second one, I guess, uh, what further information do you, do you wanna see or understand, especially around proposal number one um, for, um, b before DSpace 7? Um, so th that information, I think, the questions that you have um, really can help us to enhance and and um, uh, the use cases and make sure that the stories are are how we want them to be uh, for DSpace 7. So we're making sure that the the, the actual implementation uh, will meet um, will meet those use cases and also answer your questions at the same time. Uh, the other thing I did want to note here, um, our group is still, I mean, we're not the hugest group. We're mostly uh, not, not a whole lot of institutions represented here. But the other thing that I do wanna note here is that we're talking about, we've been talking about these, these um, proposals very much as um, institution-based for some time. So we've been talking about proposal one was built out of Atmire, proposal two came out of Four Science. We've been kind of talking about them in general, but I think that from this point forward, our goal is really to start to come together and work together more directly across the institution. And by that, I mean, um, I would really like to see uh, more development work and more people in the actual uh, code and, under, and reviewing code, uh, playing with the code around proposal number one. Um, so it should not be all based at Atmire. It should not be built entirely at Atmire. I would like to find a way for us to start to get that code in a more centralized area so that we can all start to play with it more um, and get and start to even review uh, some of that code and get feedback into that code. Um, because I'll just remind everybody with DSpace 7, our development process has changed a little bit from the past um, in terms of how we've been accepting pull requests coming in the door, how, how work has been developed. Um, while with DSpace 7, we still have uh, individual pull requests, individual features built at, at individual institutions, of course. So things have been built at For Science, at Atmire, at different institutions. All of that code um, gets a very, very thorough review, very thorough testing uh, by many other individuals, myself included, um, other folks on the DSpace 7 team. Um, and that means that the earlier we can start that process, the easier this is going to be uh, to get this lined up with DSpace 7. Uh, if we wait too long along the lines of doing code reviews, of doing testing, of analyzing things to make sure that they have all of the unit tests and integration tests that we now require for DSpace 7, I am very worried that this, this will blow our timelines apart um, if we don't start working together um, basically right away, um, trying to find ways to, to get that feedback in. Um, and our, another, one last recommendation too is that along the way, we've been trying to also split, split code up into smaller chunks as best we can. I know that's gonna be hard throughout this process, but, um, but uh, another thing with DSpace 7 is we've been, been attempting to do these code reviews and a little bit smaller pull requests. As small as we can make them, I realize sometimes things take a lot of effort, uh, but the, the earlier we can start the process of starting to review code in little segments, and getting integration tests in place and getting help from other developers, uh, the better off we're gonna be. Uh, so that's like my little raising my hand and saying we really need to try and find a way to start to collaborating more on, on the code base itself and moving this effort forward. Uh, but I'd like to hear what others think. Are there others here who can offer up developer resources uh, to start to do this analysis and help out Atmire? Well, 
what would happen if is the is the current code mergeable right now and what would that do to the you know the common code base um that's a, i don't know if it's mergeable i think that we could potentially start to move it over into the common code base in a separate branch i'm not sure if we want to put it on master immediately just because of all the development that's going on on dspace 7 mm -hmm in parallel maybe no. one comment on where it's mergeable i know that the angular part has been recently um kept in sync with the master so it's not too far off but the the rest side is has not been updated with the latest releases on master yet so that will take us some time to actually make sure that it is mergeable okay I think somebody else was about to comment in there as well. Um, yeah, I was just about to say that it, all the code is publicly available at the moment. It's on our GitHub, so you can check it out. You can play with it already. So it's not, even though it's not immediately mergeable with master, uh, with the master branch, you can already um, do some things, play around with it. Um, so. Yep, under, understood. I think what I'm talking about is getting it into an even easier place for other people to help develop on. Um, so that would imply to me we need to get it out of the Atmire repository and put it potentially in a more centralized place. Um, it's still fine if Atmire wants to continue to add um, additional work on it, uh, but it at least would allow us to get more developers involved more easily than having to have everybody develop against the Atmire repository, if that makes sense. Um, Andre, I think you had a point you wanted to add. Yes, I just want to be sure that we share the same uh, idea about the, the approach. Okay. So now we are saying that we go forward with uh, uh, proposal one. We will make uh, a community effort to check that the proposal meet the actual requirements. Uh, but we cannot merge anything. Also, if it's technically mergeable, until we reach a minimal set of features that uh, make the contribution complete. So we need to agree about which is the minimal set of feature because we cannot start to merge something that work compile is uh, without error and we discover later that we have blocking issue during the submission or in other specific feature. So this can only uh, be included when it's consistent in terms of functionality. We need to have presentation, we do have submission. We don't need to have a uh, whole the funny thing that we want to implement onto display and so on, but we need to be sure that the structure uh, is stable and will be here. We cannot make something in this space seven and change dramatically in this space eight and so on. So we need to have something maybe a limited to be extended in space eight, but I don't want to have anything in this space seven that would be changed dramatically in this space eight. And I don't want to have something in this space seven that is not really understood. So if we have something in this space seven, we need to know why and uh, which is the purpose of this, uh, of this stuff, both in terms of code and database structure and so on. Yes, yeah, I agree, Andrea. Um, we are on the same page with that. That's actually why I was suggesting we would want to do this work in a separate branch um, of the DSpace code base. I'd like to move it into a centralized location, but I do not want to move it right onto our master latest DSpace 7 work because it's not been vetted. Um, we need to do the code review process. We need to make sure that all of our DSpace 7 standards um, in terms of what we've been reviewing for you know, unit tests, integration tests, Java docs, all that stuff is, is in place before we put it into the DSpace 7 code base. So it'd be treated like any other pull request coming into DSpace 7. Um, the only difference that I see here is that rather than it being one massive pull request coming from the Atmire um, repository, I would really like to see this move into a centralized place so that we can work together on it and, and learn from it, like you're saying, and start to document it. Um, so that we, when that pull request time comes, um, hopefully it's a collaboration of three, four, five, 
10 different developers. I don't know how many it would be and preferably more of them not from Atmire um, so that we have um, other folks involved who can help us document it, who can, who can um, help us prove out the use cases that we're documenting. And then that should very well make that final review process of actually merging it over to master a much more cleaner process uh, because we've worked through this all along because we're, we're feeling more confident at that point in time with the direction and that it's the right direction for dspace 7. Um, that that seems like the direction that's the direction i'm proposing essentially does that make more sense to everyone and are there others who'd be willing to contribute into this because I think we really need more people. I, I won't be able to do this myself um, as well, but I'd want to contribute. I'd like to see other institutions step up here because that's what this working group is about, is trying to move this effort forward together. Go ahead, Levin. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, I, I agree with the approach, but I want to make a small comment that um, waiting too long to consider it's being in the master branch, that's not the same as moving it in the master branch, might have uh, an, an impact on having to redo some implementation on DSpace 7. Um, there are some features where you, where we should in, in DSpace 7 keep in mind that they might be implemented slightly different in the presence of entities. Um, well, uh, organized yeah, I, I agree with that, but I, I think that we can't add anything to master that isn't proven. And we're still- no, Like I said, it's not important cases. to yeah. have it in the master branch, but to have, to consider it be, being in the master branch for DSpace 7 and taking that into the equation when discussing a particular feature of DSpace 7. Oh, so, you mean considering that that's coming, right? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. So the working branch should be kept up with master we shouldn't just you know fork it off and work on it for a month and then try to you know merge it back in correct yeah and that's why i'm specifically asking for more developer help here as well i think because that's not, not something, something i'd be able to do myself we need to have a collaborative effort of keeping this up to date with master uh, i've been kind of you know i've been watching for something to get to a state where I can actually do some mail work on the code. So, you know, count me in. Excellent. Yeah. We'd love to have you involved with this, Mark. That'd be great. Does this direction uh, seem reasonable to everybody else? Is there anyone else who'd like to be sort of counted in as, as kind of chipping in on this code once we get it to a central location? And I'm going to call out specific names here, actually, because we have other institutions who haven't spoken up. So um, I'd be interested to hear from Roberto, Alexander, and Paulo, uh, being from three different institutions that are not at Meyer or for science, um, to see if any of you can contribute into this with developer help. I can maybe help, but I don't have experience with DTS 7. That I, I think that's that's perfectly reasonable. Everybody's trying to get up to speed on DSpace 7, um, besides the DSpace 7 team, Alexander. So I think we've got uh, plenty of resources to help train people up on DSpace 7. We also do have ongoing and regular development sprints, which are great learning opportunities for DSpace 7. Um, since a lot of this work will be on the back end initially, at least with the REST API, I think you're going to find that not much has changed on that back yes. end. Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> between six and seven. Okay. So we'd, we'd welcome your involvement as well. Um, Paulo, Roberto? Any well, comments? I'm sorry, uh, I cannot provide uh, right now any developer and I cannot uh, take time of my time right now to, to give to this uh, project. Uh, I, I would really, I would like, but I, I have no time right now. So okay. I, maybe next year, but right now it's quite diff really difficult for me. I'm sorry. Okay, well, we'd still welcome your feedback on the use cases and user yeah, stories absolutely. at a higher level. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will do that, but I cannot provide right now development time. So. Understood, thank you. And Paulo, any Hi, comments team. on your end? Yes. Team. 
sorry, I, I just arrived to, to this meeting. I, I was trying to understand what to, were you uh, um, speaking or talking about. You, you are looking for uh, contributors to, to... Yeah, so our next stage here, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't realize when you came in, I just saw your name sorry. and it popped up. Um, but uh, uh, the, the meeting is recorded, so you can go back and listen to it as well. But, okay. uh, but as a quick summary, um, our, our goal right now is that um, because there's so many people leaning towards proposal number one, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on proposal number one, okay. look specifically at our, at our two use cases and user stories that we're going to enhance um, after this meeting. So we're, I'm asking for folks to enhance the, the two main user stories and use cases um, so that we can make sure we meet those in time for DSpace 7. And as part of that, so the next stage here is that in that deeper dive on proposal one and meeting those use cases, I'm asking for the, the code for proposal one to move into a centralized location to allow us to start to work on that together so we can start to analyze it more easily in the central location, uh, fix bugs, enhance it as we're looking at those use cases and work together more as a development team. Um, and so I was kind of trying to get a sense of what people might be willing to to be active in that development work um, and help out the Atmire team and myself um, to move that forward um, in the coming months here. So I, I, I would like to, to help if, uh, if in any means to, yes. to make this happen. Excellent. Yeah, we'd love to have your involvement on a, a development standpoint or anybody else on your end that's able to help chip in on, on development and analysis of the code. Um, that would be very, very useful. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so we are at five minutes to the hour. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that pretty much wraps up the main things that I wanted to say here, but I guess I can summarize where we're at. Um, so our, I, I do have our next meeting already on the calendar, first off, um, and it's listed on the agenda. It'll be in two weeks on Tuesday, October 23rd at the same time. Uh, we're gonna meet every two weeks um, uh, until the work is complete. Um, if we need to have a, a meeting in between those two week meetings, we can always do a mat more ad hoc meeting. Um, but in the meantime, before our next meeting, I would like to see us, uh, first off, we need to get that code into a centralized location, of course, please, um, at Meyer, and I can work with you on that, On uh, where we can place that um, so that everybody can start to contribute onto that. Um, the other thing is I would like to see everyone start to analyze the use cases document. So that is, I'll link this into our Slack channel again. Um, so it's the latest link in our entities working group Slack channel, uh, looking specifically at the journal volume issue article use case, as well as the author profiles use case, and starting to enhance those uh, with uh, various uh, specific questions or specific uh, complex uh, scenarios that we want to see um, the proposal number one be able to achieve. And so we had already listed some of those uh, today that I'll, I'll work on adding in um, after that meeting, but I would encourage um, other folks to to immediately start to add comments into there, and I will take those in and resolve them as we're as uh, in order to enhance those use cases. Um, and then I think I, the other thing I would like to see is the develop the folks who have offered um, help along the way here. Um, I'm going to um, ping each of you once we have this code into a centralized place, and I would encourage you all to start to to pull down and play with it a little bit more uh, and get a sense of what, what this starts to look like just to kind of get your feet wet with it. Um, that way we can start to, to provide some early feedback into the, the code process and see, um, see how this starts to align with our use cases and assumptions. And I think those are the, the, main, top, the main things that I have uh, for the next two weeks. Uh, was there anything that I overlooked or anything else that folks want to bring up here? Yeah, I did want to uh, mention that you know while we have already been discussing these use cases in a bit more detail internally here, um, it did. So we we did like touch upon some topics that are proposal independent and are just things that have not been discussed yet. Um, just to give you one example, 
um, permissions on establishing relations. So is it necessary that we have a permission structure that allows somebody to be able or not be able to make a certain link between two entities? In, in the author profile use case, for example, um, can the submitter make that link or does the submitter need to have particular permissions to make a link between an article and an author? Um, those kind of things. Uh, there, I, I could like list five or six more of those, um, but there are some topics that have not been raised that can also use some discussion of the group and have nothing to do with either proposal, but are just choices of whether or not we think we should support them now or in the future. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is how to deal with collections and communities and, and you know, what our vision for the future is for those and how we deal with those in relation to entities. Um, so those are also things we shouldn't forget because they could have an impact on the design um, earlier uh, on in the, in the architecture. And then I had one detailed question, which I hope doesn't spark a lot of discussion about one of the use cases. Um, in the one for author profiles, Tim, you wrote, um, let me see where that was exactly. An author profile page must be able to display virtual metadata from associated works. For example, name variants of the author should be pulled from the associated works as virtual metadata. Um, and we kind of saw that the other way around, like a name variant is a property of the author entity. Like you've published under two or three names, it's metadata that belongs to the author entity and is pulled in as virtual metadata in the article rather than the other way around. So I just wanted to double check if there was a specific reason to not do it, but to have it as metadata of the, the article. So for that, answering that one first, I would say that it's more just important to be able to display them. So we should just make that use case more generic. I think okay. I may have just written it okay. in a way that was kind of more specific, but, um, but these are things that we should write into the use cases in a more generic way, just noting that author, you know, the name variants need to be associated with, you know, if you use Jane Smith on one article and JF Smith on another article, we need to know which article is which and which name variant you used but how that relationship is stored underneath doesn't really as much matter. Um, it's just that you need to be able to provide that use case. Um, okay. So, and I think that also to your initial question around a lot of these internal discussions you're having, I would like to see most of those get answered through use cases in, in, user store, in a user story. That's why I'm going in this direction because I think that that is going to pro provide us those touch points to say, okay, in this particular use case, we're talking about the author being able to manage this relationship. Can we do that in time for DSpace 7? Or do we just need to delay that for DSpace 8? Or what would that look like? Um, because I, I would like to be able to talk to it a, a very specific user story or user use case um, when we're making those decisions. Otherwise, it's very difficult for me to get my mind around those decisions. So as much as possible, please add those into the use cases and user stories where they are not possible, like in the terms of um, communities and collection best practices, I think that needs to start as sort of like uh, basic documentation around how we're gonna deal with entities and how they're stored. Um, so maybe drafting those concepts up in a wiki page that can eventually become the documentation um, is useful. So at okay. least we have that touch point. So that's kind of how I would deal with both of those two things. Sure, sure. Yeah, and the permissions one for permissions on entities are actually like the last two bullet points of your author profile user story that sparked that discussion because there you say the author should be allowed to link or unlink claim or unclaim work stored right. in the visitor profile page. So that's where that came. Yeah. So I think we should we should have a discussion around that. Yeah, to see whether we can make that happen for DSpace 7. But I did specifically write that in there because I thought that would spark discussion. <laughs> and that's part of the purpose of these use cases and user story is to spark those, those, those questions and to analyze the prototype to make sure it's gonna meet these needs. Okay, so we're over time here. I'm gonna have to close this up. <laughs> uh, it's been a very good discussion today. Um, I think we've got a good direction um, for the next couple weeks. Um, again, um, we'll move forward with, I, with what I had said, and I'm going to ping those of you who want to contribute more at the code level once we have this code into a centralized place so we can start to review that and enhance that. Um, and then we'll meet again in two weeks. In the meantime, 
We'll talk on Slack. Um, if you have any questions there, anything not clear, uh, let me know on Slack and we'll get this recording posted in the very new future. So thank you very much all. Bye, have a great, have a great day. day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.